In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, my friends, we celebrate on the Jesuit calendar of saints, St. Peter Canisius, and he was a Dutch Jesuit. I call him one of the second generation of Jesuits, and he had a remarkably uh, wonderful and fruitful life as a Jesuit. He is a model for us in terms of sharing our gifts and also uh, reflecting on what's happening in the world, on the scripture, and then taking action. He wrote a catechism, at least one. I think he might have written two. He was uh, sent to Germany, in fact, was entrusted with the society's work there. He participated in the Council of Trent. He taught at many universities. He established colleges and seminaries. He always uh, dealt with his uh, interlocutors, adversaries, uh, with charity. And he composed eight volumes of correspondence in the course of his life, and he was willing to uh, charitably criticize church leaders when necessary. So he was a completely remarkable person, and we look to him as a model, again, for reflection and action in the world. Let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to enter into the To our mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh in splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us into everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for the defense of the Catholic faith made the priest, St. Peter Canisius, strong in virtue and in learning, grant through his intercession that those who seek the truth may joyfully find you, their God, and that your faithful people may persevere in confessing you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called synagogue of freedmen Cyrenians and Alexandrians and people from Cilicia and Asia came forward and debated with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. When they, then they instigated some men to say, we've heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Senate. Presented false witnesses who testified, This man never stopped saying things against this holy place and the law. But we have heard him claim that this Jesus the Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Response, blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight, they are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declare my ways and you answer me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Bless. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood, and favor me with your law, the way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed Bless. are they who follow the law of the Lord. Alleluia. Oh, 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 oh. 
Jesus had fed the 5,000, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread, when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. This Gospel today, I think in this time, reminds us to look to God's Word to find consolation, to let the Lord uh, comfort us in our time of struggle, in our time of isolation, in this time of shelter in place. This passage takes place right after Jesus has fed the 5,000, probably more like 10,000 when we consider uh, not only the men, but the women and the children. And in this passage, this is the beginning of the section of the gospel that is called the Bread of Life Discourse. And Jesus will say something quite remarkable at the end of this passage uh, that really sets the tone for the rest of John's gospel. He says that he is here to give a great gift, a gift that will lead to eternal life. He is the one whom the Father has set his seal. And that this uh, work that one should do is simply to believe in him. And so to believe in Jesus, be his disciple, means that one uh, has the gift of the Spirit, the gift of eternal life. Now the rest of John's, uh, the rest of this discourse in the Bread of Life discourse will also incorporate, of course, the theme of Eucharist. Uh, these days, we can't receive the Eucharist normally, sacramentally, uh, so we look for other ways to experience Christ's saving love and compassion. We know that Jesus wants to feed us. Uh, what better way if we can receive the Eucharist to be fed than to meditate on God's Word, to meditate on the Word of God which Jesus gives us in Scripture. So that this time, when we are, many of us are not able to do the normal things that we do, this can be a time of tremendous grace where we can grow closer to God, coming to know God's Word and praying for all of us in our need. And so I encourage you today to grow closer to the Lord uh, by looking at God's Word and Scripture and finding God's Word speaking to you today. And so let us present our prayers to our generous God. Let's pray today for all of us that this may be, though it is a time of testing, a time also of spiritual growth, where we may turn to God's word to find new healing. For this, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let's continue to pray for all of us, the church, that we may be a sign of hope to all humanity. For this, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for our global leaders that they may continue their uh, efforts under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to guide us out of this pandemic. Uh, for this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray that one of the fruits of this time of isolation and interruption of our normal way of work may be a time where we reflect on how we can greater care for God's earth and put that 
those steps into place. For this, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, to hear our prayer. Let's pray for all those who are sick, especially our friends and parishioners who are listed here suffering from uh, COVID-19, that God may grant them uh, healing. For this, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, to hear our prayer. Let's pray for all those who have died, especially uh, our friends and family members, that God may grant them eternal rest. For this, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pray today in a special way for the intentions of Angel Gomez, for whom this mass is offered, uh, for Angel's intentions, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let's conclude our universal prayer today with a special prayer to the Virgin Mary for protection. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, our Lady of New York, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to God's will to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, fruit of the earth and fruit of the vine. They will become for us the bread of life and our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name our good and good of all God's holy church. Receive the gifts, O Lord, that we offer you in memory of St. Peter, and open our lips that we may confess and praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a 
similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come Amen. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and the entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. In our hearts, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite
unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. St. Peter spoke to your scattered flock. Grant that those who have believed in your Son and have been nourished at his sacred banquet, banquet may be worthy to remain true to his teaching and to be united in the breaking of the bread through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God.